What's up, guys? Emily here with M Loves reacting to Courtney Ryan's video. Unrealistic expectations are destroying the dating market. So let's dive in. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Courtney Ryan. And today we're going to be talking about how unrealistic expectations are destroying the dating market. So recently, as you guys probably saw, I did a group of videos with seven girls. And even though it's only seven girls, I think it's safe to say and gather just from that small group of people and that, you know, rather small batch of videos that the standards and expectations that people have in dating nowadays are incredibly unrealistic. And because those videos got so much attention online, I was expecting it to be totally honest with you. I know that some of the things the girls said were a bit crazy, a bit controversial. Um, I also just wanted to preface and say that the point of those videos was not for me to belittle the girls that were coming on my channel or sit there and patronize them or make them feel stupid. That's just honestly not who I am as a person. It's not who I am as a content creator. I know a lot of you were upset in the comments that I really didn't give much. I wasn't really saying much in the videos, but that's simply because I didn't want the videos to be my opinion. I have you know, 400 videos on my channel of my opinion and my thoughts on topics. You guys know what my opinion is and where I stand on a lot of those type of topics. Um, so the point is to see what other people think, other people who don't have a platform, other people who don't, you know, speak directly to men all the time or interact with men or advocate for men or really just deal with a lot of these topics in general. I think a lot of things that I cover on this channel are things that sadly a lot of people don't ever think about. They don't ever ponder it. They don't ever think about it. They don't ever talk about it because it's not a reality for them. And sadly, I think that's a lot of our society, you know, and we could even say mostly women in this case of some of the topics I talk about, they aren't affected by it, or at least they think that they're not affected by it. So it's not on their radar. It's not something that they talk about. And I'm not saying that to make an excuse for anything, but I really just wanted to preface this video by saying that is why you know, there wasn't a lot of me going back and forth with them. So when it comes to these unrealistic expectations that we're talking about and these, you know, really high standards, having high standards is one thing, but not knowing how rare exactly what you're looking for or asking for is will just lead to devastating results for you, the person asking for that, and anyone you interact with in a romantic manner. There are certainly bad apples on both sides. There is no arguing that. However, I do think that the good news and the silver lining is a lot of times when people have these very high expectations or high standards, it's not coming from a place of being insidious or being malicious. It's coming from a genuine lack of knowledge and understanding of the reality that we live in. They've been lied to time and time again on social media about what we should expect and what we should be looking for. I think it's evident that social media has completely warped and kind of destroyed the way that men and women view each other, especially when it comes to dating. Mm -hmm. Constantly comparing their own relationship or partner to someone's highlight reel and best moments on Instagram. Picking someone apart or writing them off completely for the most tiny, minuscule thing. Thinking that the man is- If that's happening, that's a sign of avoidant attachment and I would probably bounce out of that. Well, not bounce out, but it's not a good sign. Flying her out or buying her luxury items and he must not like her that much or she's never gonna live a life of luxury and she'll never be happy. Believing that a luxury lifestyle or life of leisure is the only way to feel fulfilled or happy and then demanding that a man make 100K or 400K because of it. It's unrealistic from pretty much every single angle that you look at it, but notably and specifically from a statistical one. So the girls that I talked to were all around 23 years old. Um, and I think they said between 80 to 100 and then 400K or above. The median salary for someone who's 23, this includes both men and women. So the amount of men is going to be even smaller, uh, $24,000 for someone who's 23 years old. The top 10% of people at 23 are making $58,000. Huh. And the top 1% of people are making $120,000. Nobody makes 400K on here as the top 1% until they are 41 years old. And also money does not equal love at all. So if that's how you're measuring things, you're already working from ego and not from actual connection. So people who are saying a man has to earn this right off the bat, that is not love, that's your ego. And that's just trying to validate your sense of self-worth through a partner, which is just not the way to go. I will say at 23, I was such an a-hole. I was not a good person. So give women a little bit of time to develop and grow and understand the world a little bit. Cause at 23, you don't know a lot of stuff. 
according to this data, $462,000. Here's one that's close at 39, it's 397. But my point is that I think a lot of people just genuinely don't understand that it takes a long time to make money. Like there is not just, all, there are not just all these rich 20 year olds running around that have $400,000 in the bank. Like it takes a long time to build wealth. Uh, and a lot of men don't reach that until they're in their forties or fifties. And these unrealistic expectations go much further than just someone's salary. Also ask yourself, why is that my expectation? Where did that come from? Did it come from social media? Did it come from somebody telling you that that was important society's expectations or pressure that you have created in your own mind? What does it have to do with love? Nada. It's height. It's how attractive they are. It's the way that they dress. It's the way that they do this and that. And all of these crazy requirements, people have checklists for the person they want to be with that look like you're going to the grocery store of just like all these things you want in a person. And sadly, a lot of times they don't hold themselves to those standards or expectations either. So it's like, why do you think you're going to get that? Yeah, you can't get a model if you don't look like a model, homie. You know what I'm saying? But also check your checklist. Make sure the things on your checklist aren't ego driven. If your checklist doesn't have kind and thoughtful as the top two spots, you might want to reevaluate your priorities. Just saying. And it's interesting for me to talk to people who don't do this for a living because I think I spend more time researching this kind of stuff and thinking about it uh, more than a lot of people do. I'm always reading up on these type of topics, reading articles, researching things for videos and content and, you know, just interacting with all of you. To someone who doesn't do this for a living, a woman specifically, I just can't imagine her ever sitting there like, hmm, what's the median salary for a man who's 25? Like. They just are oblivious a lot of the time. And, you know, I think if I wasn't doing this for a job, I would also be oblivious. I just wouldn't know because it wouldn't be a reality for me. I don't say that to act all high and mighty or again, make excuses for people not knowing things. But I think when something is not someone's current state or reality or in the little bubble that they're in in life or grew up in, they don't really think about it a lot of the time. I think sadly our culture is just that way. I think people are that way. Um, and unless something is directly impacting you, people just don't feel it as much. And that could be with anything. So again, I just think that people don't know what it is they're even asking for. Like when a woman says, you know, I want a guy who makes $400,000. Pardon me? Huh? Or even 80 to 100K in your 20s. Like, my dad worked his butt off my entire life. Got up at 5 a.m. every day, drove an hour to work, worked his absolute butt off. One of the hardest working people I know. And he never made $80,000. And I guess, I guess, you know, everyone's background does come into play here. And you kind of have to think about that when you're talking to people and interacting with people. I think you can learn a lot from people even if you have a different experience or don't necessarily agree with what they're saying, just simply by seeing how people think and maybe the way that they grew up or what they consider to be, you know, high value, not high value, a lot of money, not a lot of money. It's interesting. And I think it's really interesting for me because I come from a very lower, lower middle class background. My mom at one point was working three jobs, going to school, raising me, I see how hard it is. And I grew up seeing how hard it was to make money. Um, and my my parents combined didn't make, I don't think 80K or 100K. So I think to myself, okay, well maybe people who didn't watch that struggle or see you know, their parent work their butt off their entire life and never make that kind of money, don't understand that there's more to a person than just their salary or their job title. I guess sometimes when I'm interviewing people or just having a conversation with them and, you know, they talk about how they want a 400k salary or a 100k salary, to think that they would maybe write someone off that was making way less money than that just because of salary makes me sad because I think of people like my dad who just works so hard and is such a great person but never made that amount of money. Um, yeah, your income doesn't dictate your self-worth. And if you're judging people on that, that's not good. 
I don't know, it just really makes you put things into perspective and think about why it is we care so much about things like that. And I think it has a lot to do with a very consumerism, materialistic, luxury lifestyle perpetuating culture that we live in and a society that's fueled by, you know, highlight reels and best moments on social media and thinking that we constantly have to make more and get more and have more to be fulfilled and happy. When the reality is, is that you can have all these followers, all this money. It doesn't bring you happiness. Truly, it doesn't. So overall, I mean, I'm like going off on a tangent now, but really I just think a lot of it is a lack of knowledge, lack of knowledge of how freaking hard it is to make money. Uh, thinking that the only way to be happy or fulfilled is to have all this money or live a luxury lifestyle. Yeah, there's actually a really interesting study that shows that over like 80,000, the amount of joy that you gain from more money is very minimal. I think it's either 80,000 or 100,000, but it's it's something like that. Like your the happiness doesn't really go up exponentially. If you go from like 40,000 to 80,000, your happiness goes up exponentially. But after that threshold, it really doesn't increase your joy or your happiness. So something to consider. Um, social media, a lack of knowledge about just how much money people are making. The fact that the top 1% of people at 41 are making over 400K. Like, and in their 20s are making like 100 something. What top 1% of people, men and women combined. Like, I think when you look at the statistics and the data, it just really <laughs> puts things into perspective for you a little bit more of like, wow, I'm thankful that I was making $35,000 at my corporate job because that's a heck of a lot more than most people are making. And I was fine. I was paying my bills. I lived it within my means and it was fine. And then you get into the topic of hypergamy and you know, even though women are financially independent themselves, they still typically want men who are making more than them. I think there's only 22% of women who out earn their husbands. And as women out earn their husbands, the divorce rate goes up because they're not happy with their marriage. Men become less happy with their marriage when their wife is making more. Women are less happy with their marriage when they're making more than their husbands. It's just a mess. It's a mess. Really, when you look at it, when you take a step back and you look at everything, it's like different flow charts and this problem creates this problem and this creates that problem. It's a hot mess. And I genuinely feel for anyone who is in the dating market right now, who's dating around or who is single, I understand why people throw in the towel, to be honest with you. It's frustrating. When you're a guy who's making 50K, you're working your butt off, 40K, working your butt off, you pay all your bills, you're financially independent, and, you know, a girl's making the same amount as you, so she wants a guy who makes more. Or sees all these people living this luxurious, beautiful lifestyle on Instagram and thinks, well, I have to be with someone who's making a lot of money in order to get that lifestyle, so I can't date a man who makes less than 50K. Or 80k. Why? But at the end of the day, I really think if we want men and women to be able to come together, I don't think the way to do that is by yelling at the other side, or again, patronizing or belittling or right. making someone feel stupid. Like I never want someone to come on my channel and leave feeling like I made them feel stupid. Like I want them to learn and feel like, oh, you know, Courtney, I learned a thing from from her today. I didn't know that men make this much money and I was asking for someone who makes a crazy amount. And of course I have conversations off camera that I don't include in the video again, because I wanted those videos to just be what the girls thought and not me spoon feeding them information or my answers to tell you guys what you want to hear or to roast them or make them look stupid. I think we need to have genuine conversations and deconstruct these unrealistic expectations perpetuated by our society. And that's something that I plan to do going forward on my channel. You know, I haven't really done a lot of these girl videos. Um, that was kind of like one of my first rounds. So I'm learning as I go. I'm not perfect either. There are definitely ways I could have made those videos better, but I hear you in the comment section. I read them as painful as it is sometimes. And, you know, I plan to implement a lot of that going forward. Don't be mean to Courtney Ryan. We're making it more of a conversation instead of just me asking questions because i think it could be a lot more productive if it is a conversation right and we're deconstructing things together and really getting down to the nitty-gritty of why we think this way or what the reality is i think sometimes just hearing the reality or seeing the statistics can change a lot of people's opinion 
times or just to allow them to have a more open mind when it comes to dating and relationships and what they should be looking for in a partner that goes way further than just someone's salary. It's a conversation. I think that's how people genuinely learn and walk away feeling a little bit better about the opposite sex or about their situation. Even reading the comment section sometimes, like I know that you guys are frustrated with the fact that people think that way, but tearing people down or picking apart their looks or telling mm. them that they're a five or a six or mm. just being cruel and hateful yeah. doesn't make that person change their mind. It doesn't make them feel any better about men. You know, when women make videos tearing apart men and telling them that their hairlines are horrible or that they're fat and ugly, that doesn't make men feel any better about women. Right. The same way that if, you know, men say horrible things about women, it doesn't make women feel any better about men. Yeah, we have to respect each other and we have to respect each other's differences. So I don't think we really get anywhere by attacking each other or yelling at the other side, as I mentioned. I think let's have a conversation. And hear what yeah. people think. Get hear curious. Who don't have a platform necessarily, or that are doing this all the time for work, and are maybe a little bit more educated on a topic. Again, I think we can learn a lot about our society by what people don't know. And I think there's a lot that people don't know just based on the group of videos that I've done. So I know this video is a little bit different than what I normally do, but really I just wanted to address these incredibly unrealistic expectations that we have for each other. Um, as we can see from videos that I've done, I think it's very evident and talk about what we can do going forward and in the future to, you know, make it more productive, to have a conversation and to genuinely try to make things better. I know it's frustrating. I know dating right now is hard. Trust me, I get it. I see it. I talk to people all day, every day about it. And I really do want my channel to make dating a little bit happier and a little bit healthier for all of you. So that is what I plan to do going forward. There will be more girl videos, so stay tuned. I will take all of your notes into consideration and really do my best to make it productive and insightful for all of you guys that are watching. Awesome. Thanks, Courtney Ryan, for keeping it real. Guys, we definitely need to learn how to respect each other. We need to watch the unrealistic expectations. They're happening on both sides, really keep our mind and our hearts open. Think about the characteristics that you're looking for in a partner, not the checklist, not the income, the status, the car they drive, the neighborhood they live in or the school they went to, but their character, their kindness, their thoughtfulness, the things that they're interested in. You don't want to judge a book by its cover. I tell you what, mega dating really showed me that it wasn't about a guy's job. It wasn't about how much money he had. It was about his heart and his soul. And that's really what it comes down to. If you're looking for help on your dating journey, I can definitely help you with that. Head on over to my website at mloves.com and you can learn more about my coaching program in my free masterclass linked below this video. That wraps up this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.